very much for joining us. So now, since the first quarter GDP number, which showed a contraction of 2.2%, in the following months, what have we seen in terms of data from the primary sectors right through to the service sector? So data continues to be weak, and but we'll get a clearer sense of how much weaker versus the first quarter once we have three uh, data points. So we have three months of uh, uh, data, especially from the production side. So currently we have one month to go, and oh, one month of data. And um, but but on the expenditure side of GDP, we are seeing weaknesses there, uh, and of course we need just not to look at one quarter or quarter of a quarter, what is the trend going forward? And it's also not very promising. Mm. I suppose from the expenditure perspective, it's not really much of a surprise since uh, consumers have been faced with this onslaught of higher taxes and of course a general environment of higher prices. That's correct. Um, we're seeing higher fuel prices and consumers are complaining about that. Uh, and rightfully so, uh, higher fuel prices means that um, transport costs are higher, food prices will be higher as a result of transport costs being higher. Uh, we're seeing, and this will, uh, this will impact negatively on inflation. Um, we're also seeing all the taxes that, have, um, that were endorsed by cabinet uh, come into effect on the 1st of April, and, so, and, and also rates. So there's a lot that has been going on in terms of putting pressure on, the, on, the, on consumers, and, and that will negatively impact on retail sales, wholesale tra sales, vehicles uh, tr uh, sales, and that's a big component of the trade part of even the production side of GDP, not only uh, the consumption patterns within the expenditure side of GDP. Now, last month, um, our finance minister, Ntlantle Nene, did say that on the back of that poor Q1 GDP number, he believed that some institutions may actually start downgrading our GDP forecast for the year. Have you begun to see that happen, and what's your perspective on it? And is it too early now to start talking about the possibility of a recession? Yeah, so I still have GDP at around 1.3%. Um, you know, looking at forecasts, it's between, I think, 1.1 to 1 1.5. Um, so it's within the range. But if we continue to see weaker numbers, obviously they, we have to de uh, revise down our forecasts. Um, what we're seeing currently is that it will take a lot coming from the negative 2.2% that we saw in the first quarter. The rebound would have to be strong uh, for us to get a you know, po strong positive. I expect a slower pace of growth in the year-on-year -year numbers and maybe a slight pickup in the, in the um, quarter on quarter numbers. But if we see slower than expected numbers and which then speaks to a recession, session, uh, then we are in trouble. I don't expect that at the moment, but if we do see surprises as the numbers come through, uh, that means that we'll have to then start seeing strong rebounds in the second half of the year, which is often very difficult to do. Mm. And then, uh, of course, uh, tomorrow we should see or get this manifestation of the trade wars that we've been talking about between the U.S. and China. The U.S. is set to impose about uh, um, to impose tariffs, that is, import tariffs, on about $34 billion worth of Chinese goods. And the Chinese have, promi have promised to immediately respond with retaliatory tariffs as well. So now, if that does happen, what sort of impact would it have, if any, on the South African economy, especially if that should escalate? So we are actually feeling the brunt of this clash between the U.S. and China, and we see it in the currency weakening, flirting with 14 rand to the dollar, and that is a direct impact of this trade war. And it's not just South Africa. We're seeing emerging markets uh, being battered by this, and it's a risk-off environment where investors are pulling money out of risky assets, South Africa being one of them, and putting their money into uh, more secure, safe assets like the U.S. and the U.K. and Europe. And so that's the ramification, or at least the impact that we see from this battle between the U.S. And, and China. And I think it will escalate if it does really happen tomorrow. And it will take a lot for us to then start to manage the currency. Because as you can imagine, with the weaker currency, we see inflation increasing. The, the Reserve Bank may be pressured to then respond accordingly um, by increasing rates. And uh, that will also put added pressure on an economy that's already slowing down and where consumers are already feeling the brunt of the slow um, growth.
And of course, uh, the consumers that we worry most about are, are the poor in the country. And of course, it, as the situation gets worse from an economic growth point of view, the worse it is for them. Now, you're on this special panel that's looking at the possibility of zero rating some goods, including non-food items. How's that process going? And how do you strike the balance between doing that, which takes money away from the fiscus, which desperately needs it right now, mm -hmm. while at the same time, obviously, um, achieving the primary goal of making it a bit easier for people who are poorer it is it is a very difficult balancing act so um, and it's, it's not simple because the products that you assume should be zero rated that many have suggested that we zero rate are actually not often used by the poor and this is on um, uh, largely because of affordability so let's just take for instance sanitary towels and you'd assume okay it makes sense for us to zero rate sanitary towels and we haven't made a decision yet we're just still um, uh, we still have a month to go but um, when you look at the usage of it, so you obviously want to zero rate something that will be very impactful for to the poor, and where if the poor don't use it as much as you think they should, then zero rating it actually won't be uh, efficient, or at least it won't uh, result in uh, alleviating the pressure from the poor from a price perspective. The other option could be looking at the expenditure side and having things actually given by the state. So the state providing uh, free goods to the poor directly. So a targeted um, way of alleviating poverty rather than zero rating something where actually zero rating doesn't mean that you suddenly can afford. Mm -hmm. The affordability is the issue here. So we're looking at that and it's actually a very difficult uh, balancing act. Similarly, I can uh, use the same example with petrol prices. And uh, the other day I asked on Twitter, actually, what do you want us to do? What, do you, what would you like South Africans, uh, uh, the government to do in terms of alleviating this increase in petrol prices? And again, uh, people are saying, okay, well, we do away with uh, the levy and the uh, road accident fund. But at the same time, the levy does give uh, money to the fiscus. And so you're basically taking from Paul giving to Peter, mm. but ultimately South Africans have to pay for it. Indeed.